In today's video, the science of bikini contest prep. And today we're talking about training with Lexi Maitland. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and today we have Coach Lexi from ProPhysique.com. What's up, what's up guys? How are you, Paul? So this is part two of our video series. We already did a video talking about nutrition. So I think what we're going to break down when it comes to contest prep for bikini is kind of the essentials. Today we're going to talk about training and uh, Lexi's not just cute, she's got some credentials. So tell them about yourself, Lexi. Yeah, so for those of you who didn't tune in last week, or maybe you did, I'll remind you. So I have my Bachelor's of Science um, in Human Performance Exercise Physiology from the University of Tampa. Um, I have, have my NASM certification for personal training, and I've been a coach here at Team Pro Physique for about a year and like six, seven months now. So those nice. are my credentials. Nice, and so Lexi's uh, recently done a show, which I have a, is the vlog up for that one? For the I don't Oklahoma think show? Oh my gosh, I'm so far behind on the show vlogs. But, so she's in prep, she's already done a show, and we're about to do another show. So we're gonna get into some nuances. Um, we're gonna talk about how to peak, we're gonna talk about how to pose, cardio, we're gonna get into all these topics, diet breaks, reverse dieting, all the things that go into contest prep. In fact, if you want more information about her prep, go below to her channel. I'll put a link in the description box. She's been doing like about three videos a week, right? I've been trying, yeah. I think I'm, I'm gonna try to put out at least two per week, but I'm gonna vlog my whole show day experience. I'm gonna vlog this weekend in Charleston um, and just vlogging my whole prep and documenting it. Yeah, so we're getting ready to leave for South Carolina for NPC Universe. Lexi's going there as a not competitor yet but she is getting ready for the Battle of the Bodies in Fort Lauderdale at the end of July. So we're gonna to talk today about training. How should bikini competitors specifically train? Should you just be squatting and benching like a power lifter? Should you be doing only high reps? So let's talk about the basics of muscle building from a smart person's perspective. So give us the thousand foot view on how muscle is built. Yeah, well, I, I would say it's like to put it as simple as possible, you need a progressive overload approach in order to put on muscle, meaning you need to be training hard, training heavy. Um, and I think that there's this common consensus, especially among females, that if you train too heavy, you're gonna, you know, bulk up overnight. And that definitely doesn't happen. I'm here to tell you guys, I've been training for five years and I still look like this, pretty small. Um, but you do need to progressively overload with your workouts in order to put on any lean body mass. Um, so that's pretty much the approach we've taken for training this prep as well. Yeah, I think the, the, the idea, I hope that it's kind of gone, that, that training heavy will make you bulky. Um, that is not true. In the absence of eating like a complete jerk, you're going to put on lean body mass, which does not take up a ton of space. As you can see, Lexi trains as heavy and with as much frequency and diets perfectly as you possibly can. And she's 5'2", 103 pounds. Yeah, I'm pretty small. And um, yeah, so I always use myself as an example when people, uh, specifically females, are like, oh, I'm afraid to lift heavy. I think I'm gonna like get too big. And I'm like, been doing this for five years and I still look like this, so. Yeah, yeah. now there are, there are some examples of clients of mine that have had to back off the training. Um, genetic elite muscle builders, people like Deiraja Hill, who I've you know highlighted in my videos before, and I'll probably put a clip of her here while we're talking. So you do have to train specifically for the division you compete in and for your physique. And so for that purpose, I wanna talk about probably the, the person who has had the most influence on my training program design when it comes to coaching bikini competitors because I come from a men's bodybuilding world where I was training to build like a bodybuilder and I had to relearn my programming because when I got into coaching 10 years ago, there was no such thing as a glute day. Yeah, I agree. I mean, 10 years ago, I guess I wasn't quite training then, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely evolved over the years for sure. I don't think that the hip thrust has been around that long. No, so what we're talking about now is uh, the hip thrust, which was invented by uh, Dr. Brett Contreras, who is, is a good friend of Pro Physiques and of mine. And so the program design that I'm talking about when it comes specifically to bikini competitors is higher frequency for the body parts that are the focus. Yeah. So when it comes to bikini, we're talking mostly about glutes and shoulders. Yes, my favorite, yeah. And those are the muscle groups that I emphasize the most in my training split. I think I have three glutes and shoulders days? I know yes. I'm hip thrusting at least three times, or not at least, but three times a week. So the question often becomes, okay, so how do you train appropriately so that you can train three times a week and why do we do it that way? The reason I've you know, learned from Brett who has tons of 
in-person experience along with his, you know, his education is that when you're training multiple times per week, you basically keep the volume and the intensity of each session in such a place that you're able to train very hard, but recover before the next workout. So, so explain a little bit about how your workouts have felt. Yeah, I would say obviously as my calories do get lower, um, workouts are more challenging, but when calories are higher, the workouts are enjoyable and I feel like an athlete. Um, one thing I've noticed within myself during this prep is when I first start a workout, I'm kind of like dragging, but I feel like my energy builds as I progress through the workout. Um, and you know, I, I still have tried my best to follow the progressive overload principle. Um, you know, I may not be hitting PRs every lift, but I do my best to at least match the weight I was lifting, um, you know, during my last workout. So whatever, you know, I worked up for, worked up to on hip thrust last week for my five by five sets, you know, I'll try to match that, if not do better the next week um so that is kind of my approach there yeah so what i'll do is i'll put something on the screen here to give you a layout of how i have broken up the workouts what i really like to do and this is something that brett again i don't want to take credit for this program design because i previously would do two body parts hit the same body part twice per week once in a very heavy rep range once in a very high rep rep, rep range right so i would go power and hypertrophy if you're familiar with that what Brett has showed me is that if you break the workouts up over three different days per week and we focus on one upper body part and one lower body part per training block. So every four to six weeks, we're really honing in on a single body part, right? One upper, one lower. So it depends on your physique. If you need a little bit more back, if you need a little bit more shoulders, hamstring, quad, glute, we can alter it every fourth week. If you're sticking with a shoulder and a glute program for that four weeks, we really wanna focus on three days a week. And the beautiful thing that we do is we train glutes and shoulders on the same day, right? So because you're not gonna fatigue that lower body when you're training the upper body, right? Correct. So yes. I really enjoy that. So I'll put it on the screen here so you can understand how we're breaking it up. The goal for the other body parts, so if we're doing glutes and shoulders, so the goal for the back, the goal for the hamstrings, quads, is probably to maintain because we probably have enough muscular development at this time and the focus is those big body parts. So. Talk to me about how you felt, how's your recovery been, how has your strength been going through this, you know, program? Yeah, I've honestly felt like it's been great. Um, I think recovery has been really good, you know, there will be an occasional day where I'll get really, you know, where I will get sore, um, but I would say, you know, um, consistently I'm not like sore day after day. I feel like recovery has been really awesome, and then intensity of my workouts has been really good as well you know you may think that oh hip thrusting three times a week like lexi by the third day of the week that you're doing that aren't you like totally burnt out but no um you know kind of like paul said because i'm not doing like a, a full leg day and i'm not fatiguing the muscle completely in one workout you know i find that when i do hip thrust you know it's just me doing like hip or on my glute and shoulder days when i'm just doing maybe three glute exercises, I'm really able to give my all to those glute exercises and the quality of them is is amazing compared to if I was dedicating like a whole day to doing, you know, six, seven, eight yeah. different glute exercises. Yeah, I think, you know, you know, for the years that I was doing bodybuilding, it was kind of like a survival thing. You, the, the leg days would see, be so difficult to just survive, you know, the, the volume, the intensity that you almost had to psych yourself up just to go to the gym on those lower body days. Um, this program, although, you know, the way I feel it's that we're doing it is you still have the intensity in the individual set. You just don't have so much volume that you are breaking your body down that it's impossible to recover. You know, I, I understand the mindset of like, I had to crawl to my car after a workout, mm -hmm. but sometimes you're going to go beyond your maximum recoverable volume if you train Absolutely. like that okay so it's about finding that balance it is and you have to remember too especially you know we're particularly talking about training during bikini prep um when you're in prep you're in a caloric deficit so your recovery isn't going to be as amazing as if you were in you know a maintenance or a surplus too so that's something you have to kind of consider as well yeah so the goal should always be to see where you're at in the process Lexi is an advanced athlete, so she's been training for a very long time. We're training very specifically for her goals. If you're early on in your muscle building phase, you probably don't need three glute and shoulder days. You probably could just start with one glute day, one shoulder day, one back day, right? And then as you progress, as you get more advanced, as you require more volume to build muscle, 
Well, then you can go ahead and start getting more specific where you're doing maybe two days a week or even three days a week. Again, this is a very advanced approach, but when it comes to the science of muscle building, um, it's about finding the best way for the individual. And for her at her advanced kind of state of prep and experience, for us to put muscle on, doing one shoulder day a week would not get it done. No, absolutely not. Maybe in the beginning when I started lifting five years ago, but definitely not now. Yeah, absolutely. So understanding that, you know, program design, it's very important that you understand where you're at now, what your goals are and where you're going. Um, and you know, I probably can put some video of Lexi either on stage that I have or just posing in the gym, but you can see kind of what we're focusing on and, and the reasons for that, okay? So yeah, it's all about understanding what the judges are looking for, what the competitors are looking for, and then programming around that. And then what specific exercises uh, have you found to be really good for, for glutes? Oh, okay, of course the hip thrust. Yeah. Like, that is just my favorite. I, I actually look forward to coming in and, and doing my hip thrusts. Um, you know, for me, as an individual, I've always felt like it's been hard for me to isolate my, my glutes. My quads always want to take over, but I find that hip thrusts, um, also Bulgarian split squats, um, I really find that those target my glutes if I really um, focus yeah. on driving through my heel. Um, and then I do love glute hand raises as well. So where do you feel the front squat? Um, you know, I I do feel the front squat. If I go heavier when I do front squats, I will feel that in my quads. Okay. Um, but like I said, my quads have always just kind of taken over almost every exercise if I don't focus on my muscle connection. Now, if I do go lighter with my front squats and kind of sink into my heels more, I feel it a bit more in my glutes as well. Okay. So yeah, so th you have to also be able to find movements that kind of target, you know, Brett's done some really cool research. And if you haven't checked out Brett's channel, he's got some really cool videos on this. But, you know, he's actually done some like, you know, checked out where the muscles are firing in his lifters. And he's found that, you know, two people doing the exact same lift, one will feel it in their quad, one will feel it in their glutes. That's biomechanics, that's individual. So you have to listen to your body as well. So you need to get programming for you, for you specifically. So, you know, I think it's very common nowadays for people to just kind of go, oh, I like what that girl does, let me do oh, her program. Yeah. Yes. And there can be some value there in learning but also be willing to experiment and use yourself as a guinea pig and say, well, let me try these other movements and see how they feel. Absolutely. Um, you know, one exercise that works for someone may not work for another person. You know, like Paul just said, Brett's done a bunch of studies that show that two individuals can do the same exact exercise, but maybe they're both recruiting slightly different muscle fibers. So, um, yeah. so that's very interesting. Yeah. So I think that'll be it for today. When we talk about training, we can go more nuanced. We can go more program design down the road, but I want to just, I want to get these topics out, nutrition, yeah. training. We still got to talk about posing, cardio, diet breaks, refeeds, like peaking. But there's so much we're going to cover, guys. So comment below if there's something specifically you'd like to hear about when it comes to bikini prep. We will be documenting our trip to, to uh, NPC Universe. I've got a bunch of show vlogs to do still. Yeah. And then don't forget, Lexi's doing three videos a week right now, documenting Try. her own prep and being a coach. So, you know, we got to cheer her on for all the effort. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, that was a All good right. one. Alright, see you guys tomorrow.